You know, there's one thing that every person on this planet has in common, and it's that same one thing that's guaranteed to happen to all of us sometime in life. It's the one thing we all think about, but rarely even want to talk about. What am I talking about? Death. That's right. You see, death comes calling for us all. And one day, death's icy grip will grab you and pull you down to the grave. But what then? Is that the end of the road? We're going to tackle one of the toughest topics of all time today in this episode of Prayer Stop. know for sure how or when we will die, but we do know that on that day, we have an appointment to meet our Maker. Put your hands up! Turn around! Turn around! Give me the keys! Give me the keys! Give me the keys! Don't shoot me! Give me the keys! Give me the keys! Put the gun down! Come on! Come on! Put the gun down! Don't shoot me! Don't shoot! Don't shoot me! Come on! Did you know two people die every single second? And that means by the time you're done watching this television show, 3,600 people will have come to the end of their road and end up in a place like this. You know, the most significant thing about death is that no one knows exactly how or more importantly, when they will die. Oftentimes when I'm sharing the gospel, people will say things like, I'm in a hurry, I gotta go, or hey, I'm just not interested, which is really code for, I really don't wanna have this conversation right now. So understanding the significance and the importance of that conversation and the fact that they could die that very day, I usually respond with something along the lines of, well, I understand, I tell you what, Why don't we set up an appointment to talk about this again on the day you're going to die? And that way you can make sure you're right with God before you stand before him to give an account of everything you've ever said or done. Now, they always look at me perplexed and dumbfounded as they search their mind for the day they're gonna die. Thing is, they can't because no one knows for sure the day they're gonna die. Take as an example, the 
tragic earthquake and subsequent tsunami in Japan recently. Those people woke up that day and went about their daily lives, not thinking about or even realizing that in a matter of moments, thousands of them would never again see their friends, their family, or their coworkers as a 20 foot high wave would literally sweep them off the face of the globe forever. You know, death does come for us all. And last week, we showed you a clip of a gentleman we met at one of our prayer stop kiosks who had an interesting encounter with death and experienced it firsthand. So let's go back to last week's clip and look at it in its entirety as our prayer stop partner, Mike Swagger, and this man named Jason discuss death and life in a clip I call, I Died. Stop and pray. Anything I can pray for you about? I'm a Christian myself. I appreciate it, though. Right on. Well, how about we pray for, for uh, thanking God for everything he's done for us? I'll agree with you on that one. Like I say, trust me, God has actually me more than uh, you'll ever even know. All right. Uh, Share I'll with get, me a little I'll bit give you an example. Uh, a little over seven years ago, December 16, 2002, I died. Really? Literally. But anyway, I had an out of body experience and got to see and feel again what heaven looked like. I wish I could describe, but I can't. Yeah. Saw so my uh, my granddad, my uh, my dad's dad. Man's my dad's time. I was eight years old. Tell me what was my time. Behind him, I flipped inside. Got to see and feel what heaven looked like. I wanted to go. Tell him what was my time. So I had to go back. I woke back up after 12 days being in a coma. My left leg was paralyzed for about uh, four or five days. My right leg was split in half. Uh, left side's bone cracked straight in half. Got a metal plate in my head now. <clears throat> I was blind because my left eye sold the size of baseball, literally. Blind for about two or three weeks. My left leg was completely paralyzed for about four or five weeks. Uh, knew my name, Berlin Hospital. That was it. Wow. No memories. Couldn't walk, talk, feel myself, nothing. Like I knew my name, Berlin Hospital. That's it. Thanks, guy. I got everything back. Wow. And you're walking and you're. Yes, and you're not healthy. I'm blind, paralyzed, no informed paralysis, you know, not a vegetable, as you can tell. Nothing. Well, it looks like you do have a lot of stuff to thank God about. Yes, sir, and the crazy thing is, I'm not that old of a man at the exact same time, but uh, that's one of seven times in my life to different things that have uh, that bad of heightened state, you should say, that uh, shouldn't be a life, period. Well, so I pray to God every single day. Well, let's, let's we pray. try to never miss a chance to pray with people especially when it comes to God giving us our very life and our breath back. So before we move on, let's go back to the clip of Mike and Jason and listen to that prayer of thanksgiving that took place just before Jason went on his way. All right, let's pray then. Dear Heavenly Father, me and Jason come together uh, here in the name of Jesus Christ, and we'd like to just thank you, Lord, for all of the, the great blessings and, and the miracles that you have performed. And, in his life, Lord, and, and I'd just like to thank you, Lord, for you to continue to walk with him and put your hedge of protection around him and, and continue to bless him in his life and, and draw him closer to you and work in his life, Lord. And I thank you for this in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Right on, man. Hey, Prayer Stop Partners. This segment of the show is just for you. Each and every week, we're gonna give you some tips and some tools to help you make the most of your outreach efforts. This week, I wanna draw your attention to something you're commonly gonna see our Prayer Stop partners do. It's just before they pray with someone, they'll ask the quintessential question. What's that? We pray in Jesus' name, do you know why? First, we do that because we know there's power in the name of Jesus, and it's where two or more are gathered that these things can be done in accordance with God's will. Secondly, we know when someone comes to our kiosk, they're gonna have one or two different needs. The first of those needs is the obvious one. It's the one they express when they come and stop and pray. We call it the temporal or the immediate need, you know, Things like a job, a place to stay, something for their family, finances, their marriage, or more. Of course, we want to pray and intercede as we stand in the gap, petitioning God on their behalf. But we also know, what would it profit a person if they gained the whole world, yet forfeited their soul? In other words, what good would it be for me to pray for someone and that they got everything they ever wanted, but in the end, 
they die and end up in hell forever because I never took the time to share the powerful, amazing message of love, hope, and redemption that not only had the power to save their soul, but to make them whole. So as a checkpoint in the road of conversation, once you've listened and you fully understand what their immediate need is, just before you pray with them, ask, we pray in Jesus' name. Do you know why? Who is Jesus to you? Watch this quick clip that clearly illustrates how powerful and effective this one question can be in helping you to quickly ascertain whether or not someone is saved and has a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. I just, we pray in Jesus' name. Do you know why? I'm Buddhist, so. Buddhist, okay. Well, as you can see, this one question is very telling. And if you get a response like the one we got from that guy, or if they say anything other than Jesus is my Lord and Savior, that's a good sign that you need to keep asking more questions about their salvation and take the road of the conversation with them off towards sharing the gospel. G-O-S-P-E-L. And we're gonna show you exactly how to do that in future episodes. But for now, just remember, right before you pray with someone, ask them, we pray in Jesus' name, do you know why? A wise man once said, be often where death is. Why? Well, I guess it's because it reminds us of the reality that none of us live forever and that time is ticket. Deep inside, we all know that someday the road of our life will come to a dead end. But what then? Does everyone who dies have the same experience as this guy, Jason? Is there really a heaven? How about a literal hell? So who goes to heaven and who goes to hell? And what is the standard by which we'll be judged in the end? You know, of the thousands of people that I've asked, will you go to heaven when you die? I would estimate that about 90% of them quickly said, yeah. And I understand since I can't imagine anyone wanting to go to hell. I mean, as Jesus described it, hell is a horrible place of darkness, perpetual torment, and a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. The place where the worm never dies and the fire's never quenched. It's a place where after a trillion years, people will still cry out, begging for death, screaming, just let me die. And yet, there'll still be no answer or any relief. I mean, who would want to go to hell? Take this guy Jason as an example. He tasted death and he saw what was on the other side and came back to bear witness to the fact that death is not the end of life. But how about you? Do you know for sure there's something on the other side? And if so, where will you spend eternity? Let's take a look at an interview that I had with a woman who also had a death to life experience. Listen closely to her powerful and compelling account of her experience with death and what she says is on the other side of life on earth. It was 1992. I was 31 years old. Well, my life was pretty good at that time. Um, I was a young mother. I was uh, married to a very nice guy. I was pregnant with my second child. Professionally, I had a good job with Fortune 500 company. I was doing well, I was climbing the ladder. Uh, my husband also had a good job. We were doing life, we were uh, living the dream. Well, spiritually, um, I would say I was nowhere. I really didn't have a relationship with God. I believed that there was a God. Um, but I didn't believe that um, he was concerned about me um, or even wasn't even sure that uh, he loved me or anyone else for that matter. Actually, I was terrified of death um, because I think in the back of my mind, that childhood upbringing told me that there was a hell and that if you had um, disobeyed God's laws, you deserve to spend eternity there. And I went into labor with my second child, and it was a very long and difficult labor. But my daughter was born healthy, and um, uh, she was beautiful. So I looked up 
at the nurse and I said, you know, I'm not feeling so good. And she took um, the baby from me and immediately I passed out. And um, I could still hear what was going on around me. Um, I heard um, one of the nurses say, um, what's her pulse? And the nurse on my right said, uh, 70 over 30. But in my heart and in my mind, I knew, wow, I'm gonna die. I started to talk to God, I said, you know, I know I hadn't lived my life the way I should have lived it. Yeah. I was taught about your son Jesus and I know um, that he died to save me from my sins. And I also know that you have the perfect right to judge me and to determine where I spend forever. And so I put my life in your hands. And then I heard the nurse say, I can't get a pulse. And bam, immediately I was in this light. Uh, it, was, it was a light whiter than a white that you have ever seen before. It was just pure white light. That peace that I had never experienced in my life was there. And a love that I had never experienced. I knew in my heart that I was loved by God. I was standing in the presence of God and I felt so inadequate, so humbled. I knew that I didn't deserve to be there. I knew that I had sinned. I knew that I had wanted things that other people had. I knew that in my heart I had thought of how to kill an abusive boyfriend with a butcher knife. I knew I deserved hell. I knew I deserved to die, but yet here I was in the presence of God, feeling a love towards me, a love I didn't deserve. And then he spoke and he said, it's not your time. Go, your life has just begun, and do my work. And then, bam, as quick as I was in heaven, I was back in that hospital room, and it was like, no, I don't want to be here. I want to be back there. Like, heaven is a real place, and, and not just something that's off over there somewhere in the distance or up in the sky somewhere. It, it's a real, tangible place. So here's two different people who never met, and yet they had a similar experience after they were clinically dead. Believe it or not, just like these two people, there are literally thousands of others who know there's something on the other side of death. Why? Because they too have experienced death only to live and then tell about it. While some of these people who had death to life experiences tell us that they went to heaven and others sadly say they went to hell. Yet, no matter what their experience, all of them would tell you that without a doubt, their life after death experience was more real than the experiences they have here in life. So whether they were in the presence of God or Satan himself, it felt more real than what we call reality in this present existence. So how about you? Do you think there's life after death, a heaven or a hell? One thing I know for sure is that no sane person I've ever met wants to die. In fact, I have found through long experience that the greatest will of all is the will to live. We all have a lot of wills or desires, you know, like the will to succeed, the will to be liked, or the will to be loved and much more. But there's no greater will than the will to live. Don't believe me? Think about it like this. People spend billions of dollars each and every year in America alone trying to live just a few days longer. They'll spare no expense and do everything possible to put off the inevitable for as long as they possibly can. And you know why? Because God has placed eternity in the hearts of all people. We all know when we do something that's wrong. Why? 
because of our God-given conscience. The only real question that we need to be asking ourselves is will we let Satan steal our soul and blind us from the truth or will we surrender our life at the foot of the cross and be forgiven for the wrongs that we've done and get right with God? Let's go back and watch the rest of the interview with Teresa and see how her death to life experience changed her life for the better forever. Knew that I'd been given a second chance. I had life and I know I had deserved death and that I had to make some changes in my life. And it changed me. I mean, the things that I used to do, I didn't want to do anymore. You know, the, the things that I had enjoyed of this world just weren't the same. Um, I was able to share the gospel message with my daughters and led them into a relationship with Jesus Christ. I also, uh, over a period of years, was able to witness and share the gospel with my husband. And he also is a believer now, as well as my parents. Uh, have come into a relationship with Christ. And I continue to tell anyone I can about the love and the mercy and the saving grace of Jesus Christ. And I'd like to tell them I had no idea that November 1st, 1992 was going to be the last day I had here on earth, that my life was demanded of me. I almost didn't get a second chance. I prayed and asked the Lord to forgive me of my sins on that hospital bed in the last seconds of my life. I would tell them, don't wait that long. Do it now, do it today, or it may be too late. You know, someday, hopefully for your sake, a hundred years from now, your name will be written on one of these. What then? Is that it? Is death the end of it all? The Bible says it's appointed unto man to die once, and after this, the judgment. In other words, you'll stand before God to give an account of everything you've ever said, everything you've ever thought, everything you've ever done and even felt. You know, I've asked thousands of people whether they thought when they died, if they would go to heaven or would they go to hell? Not surprisingly, overwhelmingly, most said they would go to heaven. The number one reason why? Because they were a good person. How about you? Are you good enough to go to heaven? You know, the Bible said God created us in His image to have a relationship with Him, but we have a problem. It's our sin. The Bible says the wages of sin is death and the punishment, eternity in the lake of fire. Now I know that may seem a bit harsh, but ask yourself, what does a good judge do to a guilty criminal? In other words, if you do the crime, you'll do the time. You see, God isn't willing that any of us should perish in spite of the fact that we've all sinned and we all fall short of the glory of God. The truth is we've all broken God's laws. Ask yourself, have you ever lied? Have you ever stolen? Jesus says, if you look with lust, you've already committed adultery with that person in your heart. No, we've all sinned, and the wages of sin is not only death, the punishment is eternity in the lake of fire. But here's the good news. Proving he was God, Jesus came to this earth. He performed many miracles. He raised the dead, he healed the sick, the lame, the blind. And then he did something even more miraculous. He proved he was God by fulfilling all the prophecies that were written about the coming of the Messiah who would take away the sins of the world. And then, he paid the price for sin when he died and he rose again. And the Bible says, everyone who call on the name of the Lord, turn from their sin and turn to Christ would be saved. But why? Why would God send his one and only son to take the punishment for your sin and for mine? Because he loved you. You see, there's no greater love than this, than that a man lay down his life for his friends. So I ask you today, will you turn from your sin and turn to Christ? The directions to heaven are very simple. Take a U-turn towards Christ and then go straight. 
You know, one of the primary reasons why we're doing this TV show is to encourage, equip, and to empower other people to start their own Prayer Stop outreach. We know Prayer Stops are powerful, effective, and so simple, anybody can do it. But don't take my word for it. Listen to these Prayer Stop partners about their first experience. One thing I can tell you about the Prayer Stop, it's a very easy, very effective way to, to start evangelizing in your own cities, in your own state, in your own communities. I really like the Prayer Stop because um, you do a lot of what Jesus did, where Jesus met a lot of the physical needs first. You know, He provided, He fed the 5,000, He gave food, He healed people. And so you meet that physical, immediate need first with prayer, um, and then you're able to weave the gospel into it. That it's so easy. Um, I would have to say that the tools given to us, the, the, the training is all um, perfect. The Prayer Stop kiosk is like a, a light that shines around an area. So a lot of times you'll have people that come up to the Prayer Stop kiosk asking you, what is this that you guys are doing? So it's almost like you don't even have, <laughs> the, the, the Prayer Stop kiosk does the fishing for you. All you have to do is be there to receive the fish as they come into the boat. What happens after you die? After you die? Uh, you either go to hell or you go to heaven. I have no idea what happens when you die. I think you just die and they bury your body. Well, hopefully I go to heaven. I'm going to go to hell. Hell or heaven? Um, I'm going to heaven. Who knows, man? I'm not sure. I'll be dead. Nothing. Yeah, I guess you go up there, man. You go up heaven and just look, on, you look over you look over everybody. Um, depends on your choice, uh, what decision you make before you die. Yeah. I don't know. You go to heaven. They go to heaven. Hmm. Here's how you get there. You be cool to other people. Do you understand what I'm talking about? You be cool to other people, you're respectful, and you might listen to them every once in a while. Do you understand what I'm talking about? You might listen to what other people say. Well, as you can see, there's a lot of people out there who believe a lot of different things about what happens after we die. And next week, we're going to talk in depth and in detail about why we know the gospel's true and why Christians are compelled, even commanded, to share it with others. In closing, I hope after all we've shared in this episode about death, that you realize the question isn't whether we'll die or even how or when we'll die. The real question is where will I spend eternity? Will I go to heaven or will I go to hell? The truth is we're all gonna live forever. The question is where? Until next week, this is Daryl Runda saying I thank God for you. episode, or to find out more about our ministry and how to start your own Prayer Stop outreach, please visit our website at prayerstop.org.